Since Starship successfully took off on the morning of Saturday, November 18th, from a narrow peninsula of land at the southern tip of Texas, information surrounding the launch has been discussed more enthusiastically than ever before. In particular, the public is very interested in the reason why the Starship rocket exploded. Meanwhile, the SpaceX team is focused on meticulously analyzing every aspect of this event, figuring out what they can learn to be better on their next flight. In the end, we didn't have to wait long as SpaceX officially explained about the second Starship launch explosion. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of Tech Map. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. Nearly seven months ago, Starship's first test flight ended in an unexpected scenario called a rock tornado. However, in the November flight, everything has been changed significantly. According to the updates about the second Starship's launch on SpaceX's website, all 33 Raptor engines on the Super Heavy booster started up successfully and, for the first time, completed a full-duration burn during ascent. This paved the way for the main engine cutoff and subsequent successful hot-stage separation. During the separation, all Raptor of Super Heavy's Raptor engines were powered down but three. Later, the six-second stage Raptor engines were ignited successfully before separating the vehicles. This was the first time this technique had been done successfully with a vehicle of this size. Following the separation, with the support of six engines, the vehicle reached an altitude of roughly 150 kilometers and a velocity of approximately 24,000 kilometers per hour becoming the first Starship to reach outer space and nearly completing its full duration burn. The water-cooled flame deflector and other pad upgrades performed as expected, requiring minimal post-launch work to be ready for upcoming vehicle tests and the next integrated flight test. On the other hand, like the first test flight, this Starship launch also helps the SpaceX team know what they are missing so they can improve to be better next time. Indeed, after separation, Super Heavy tried to reignite the second ring of the Raptor to provide maximum gimbal for the flip maneuver and at the same time kick off the boost backburn. However, the failure of one engine on the second ring was followed by the shutdown of several core engines, and eventually all of them were shut down. The unsuccessful center core engine reignition could have contributed to the final rapid unscheduled disassembly. Similarly, Ship 25 could not escape the fate of exploding. After climbing to an altitude of 148 kilometers or about 485,000 feet, all six of its engines seemed to cut off simultaneously, earlier than expected. Telemetry was also lost near the end of the second stage burn prior to engine cutoff after more than eight minutes of flight. The team verified a safe command destruct was appropriately triggered based on available vehicle performance data. Interestingly, the Starship's explosion in IFT-02 is not only a concern for Elon Musk and his team, but also an attractive topic for space fans. Indeed, on X we can see the postulations given by some as to the reason why the Super Heavy booster exploded involving thermal overload. Given that during stage separation, the hot staging ring, one part of the hot staging technique, could not withstand the combined force and thermal intensity of the three sea level raptors and three raptor vacuums, even though it was made of stainless steel, the same as the rocket fuselage with the same thermal tolerances, the hot stage ring became superheated, which transferred the thermal variant to the fuel tank, causing the tank's detonation. So, a possible resolution to this problem is to add thermal protection to the dome of the hot stage ring or to the top of the methane fuel tank. This is because the methane gas being pumped back into the tank for pressurization is vulnerable to the increase in temperature of the hot staging. 
Anyway, although Starship's stages could not complete their journey as planned, at least the rocket has done so much better than its predecessor, pushing Elon Musk one step closer to Mars. Of course, to do that, the SpaceX team had to collect and analyze the errors that led to the explosion in IFT-01, thereby making many changes to both Starship and its ground systems. As you know, the main cause of the explosion during Starship's first test was the Raptor engine, Starship's most difficult problem. At that time, some engines were observed to fail to fire and others to stop while operating mid-flight. This prevented Starship from performing main engine cutoff and stage separation. This is caused by many reasons. Firstly, the manifold system was found to be vulnerable to the extreme temperature and pressure conditions of spaceflight. This system is responsible for distributing fuel to the engine. So when there is a crack in it, fuel will leak and reduce engine performance. Secondly, the fuel pump system, which is essential for delivering fuel to the engines at the required pressure and flow rate, also met trouble. It prevents necessary fuel from entering the engine, causing it to shut down suddenly during flight. Thirdly, the high temperature conditions experienced during launch and ascent also directly led to material failure, then affected the overall efficiency and performance of the engine system. Besides, hydraulic failures in the thrust vectoring system caused multiple engines to be unactivated, resulting in the Starship losing speed. Finally, the ignition system plays an important role in starting the engine. The engine's failure to ignite consistently posed a significant risk to flight stability and safety. In addition, the lack of a flame diverter system caused quite serious damage to the OLM. To overcome those challenges, a series of changes to the whole rocket and its ground-based system were conducted. For the engine, the team redesigned the fuel pump system and the ignition system to make sure it worked more reliably. The manifold system and hot air duct materials were upgraded to be more resistant to heat and pressure. The hydraulic thrust vectoring system has been replaced by the electronic system, helping 33 Raptor engines maintain stable operation and improving the Starship's pace. Another update on the rocket is about the hot staging separation an alternative to the traditional one in which the upper stage's engines begin firing before Starship and Super Heavy have fully separated. This concept isn't new. It has been used on vehicles like the Titan II from NASA's Gemini program in the 1960s and Russia's venerable Soyuz rocket, which is still in operation. The launch pad is also refurbished by adding a water deluge system used to protect the structure against 16.7 million pounds of thrust. Obviously, after going through two actual test flights, SpaceX now has enough knowledge, experience, and confidence to enter the third test flight of Starship. Indeed, we can see that if SpaceX's engineering team was able to significantly improve the reliability of the Starship rocket's engines within a few months, then in the next test flight, the Raptor may not be such a big deal anymore. In a recent tweet, Elon Musk also hinted at this, saying that for his team, engine production is not the limiting factor. He even revealed a more advanced Raptor version that was robust enough not to require a heat shield would also have more thrust, higher ISP, and many other improvements. To be honest, we have no idea whether that next generation version can be ready for the third launch, which is targeted before Christmas. Either way, it signals that perhaps SpaceX has found a way to handle engine problems in IFT-02, so the probability of Starship reaching orbit in IFT-03 will almost absolutely. This is also beneficial for the goal of a powered soft landing of the vehicle that the company sets for the next time, which requires the ability to reignite its engines after re-entry. This leads to the ultimate goal of using Mechazilla's arm to catch the ship. In addition to the engine, SpaceX has also been focusing on improvement and testing on Starship's next prototypes. According to SpaceX's CEO on November 20th, there were three ships in final production in the high bay, including Ship 30, Ship 31, and Ship 32. 
At the same time, SHIP-28, which is selected for IFT-03, has completed most of its crucial installations, with the most notable being its heat shield tiles, which are more robust compared to those on SHIP-25 from the recent flight. Its intended companion, Booster-10, has already successfully passed the cryogenic testing at Massey, and at the time I made its report, it is currently in anticipation of a static fire test. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time